I'm going to be showing you how to send a request to directions service to get the directions data. Then I'll be showing you how to render the result as a polyline drawing on the map. Directions API is a web service that calculates directions between locations. It also provides us with the path direction from the origin to the destination, including multi-part directions using waypoints based on various transportation modes such as driving, walking, and so on. Directions API can be accessed in two different ways using HTTP interface or using its direction service which is a client-side JavaScript library that Google offers. So what is the difference between directions API and direction service? Well the directions service is a client-side library that Google offers to only a few languages and luckily JavaScript is one of them. On the other hand, the HTTP interface can be accessed by any platform and this is predominantly used by the languages that are not listed in the Google's client library. The directions service is not only getting directions but also takes care of displaying as a polyline drawing of the route on the map. This can be done using two objects that the library provides which are directions service and directions renderer. This is way easier than using the HTTP interface as we would have to do it manually. Let's take a look at how the directions service works. Basically, the directions service object talks to an API behind the scene that takes directions requests such as origin, destination and travel mode and return the efficient path including multi-part directions. Then the route directions are displayed as a polyline drawing on the map. First, make sure that the directions API library is enabled on the Google Cloud Console. Also make sure that the Google Maps client-side library is included in the project. Then create an instance of the directions service object and call the route method on the direction service object to initiate a request to the directions service. This method takes a couple of arguments and let's take a look at them one by one. The first one is the directions request which will be a JavaScript object. Let's take a look at all the required fields that we need to add in the directions request JavaScript object. The first one is origin. The value of the origin parameter can be one of the three formats which are plain street address or geographic coordinates, latitude and longitude separated by a comma without any space in between or the place ID. This will be the starting point for calculating the directions between locations. The second one is destination. The value of the destination parameter can be one of the three formats similar to origin. This will be the ending point for calculating directions between locations. The third required property is travel mode, M uppercase. This could be driving, bicycling, transit, or walking. It must be all uppercase. Let's take a look at the second argument, which is a callback function. The directions service is asynchronous, so 
the callback function will be called upon completion of the service request. Then it will return a directions result and a directions status that we can access from the parameters in the callback function. As you can see, the response object has a lot of information about directions. For example, the lake property will have travel distance, duration, and steps information, which basically tells you when to maneuver, such as turn left, turn right, keep right, and so on. The next one, overview path, for example, will show you the location coordinates, which can be used to draw the polyline between origin and destination locations. Using directions renderer, we can easily display the directions path on the map with just three steps. First, we need to create a directions renderer object. Then we need to add the directions renderer object to a map where it needs to be rendered. Finally, we need to tell the renderer what needs to be rendered, in this case, directions result, which is specified in the callback function parameter. That's it. Now let's have some fun by putting this into action. This will be a three-step process. The first one is to create a map object and display it on the view. So go to the directions map view component. Inside the mounted function at the top, create an instance of the map object. So constant space map equals new space google dot maps dot map m uppercase opening and closing parentheses and semicolon. This takes a couple of parameters and the first one is the DOM element that we want to display the map into. So let's add a ref attribute to the section element in the template. After the class attribute, hit space ref equals map in quotes. Then come back to the map constructor and pass the DOM element reference as a first argument. So inside the parenthesis, this dot dollar sign refs, which is a JavaScript object that will have all the ref attributes as properties in it. So to access the map property, I'm going to use opening and closing square brackets and map inside the quotes. Now we want to provide a little bit more information to the map object about how we want it to be displayed. So pass a JavaScript object, comma, opening and closing curly braces. In there, add three properties. The first one is center and the value of it will be a lat long object passing the coordinate values as arguments so that the map will be centered on the screen based on that new space google dot maps dot lat long opening and closing parentheses in there i'm going to center the map based on ottawa so i already found the coordinates for it and I'm passing them inside the parentheses separated by a comma. Next is the zoom property and the value of this will be an integer. The higher the number is, the closer the map will be and vice versa. So comma zoom colon 15. Finally, the map type and I'm going to use the road map type. So comma map type ID colon google dot maps dot map type id dot roadmap all uppercase switch back to the browser and the map looks and works as expected nice the second step is to get the directions data 
from the directions service. So declare the direction service object right after the map object. So const space directions service equals new space google dot maps dot directions service opening and closing parenthesis and semicolon at the end. Inside the callback function where we receive the selected route data, invoke the route method on the directions service object. So directions service dot route opening and closing parenthesis and semicolon. I'm going to pass two arguments to it. The first one is the directions request, which is a JavaScript object literal with request parameters as properties or fields. The second argument will be a callback function. As you know, the directions service is asynchronous. So this callback function will be called upon completion of the service request. Let's add the first argument. Inside the parenthesis, create a JavaScript object literal. In there, add three required properties or fields to it. The first one is origin. Set the actual address as a value of it. Data dot origin dot address. To make it simple, I'm going to destructure the data parameter by extracting the origin and destination properties from there into distinct variables. So instead of data, add open in closing parenthesis, open in closing curly braces, I'm going to say origin comma destination. This way I can use origin dot address directly instead of using data dot origin dot address. Make sure that origin and destination variables in here are matched with the property names inside the route object. Let's add the next required field, which is destination. So comma destination colon destination dot address. Then the final required property, which is travel mode m uppercase colon driving all uppercase in quotes like so. Now let's define the second argument to the route method, which is the callback function with two parameters. So comma open and closing parenthesis. I'm going to pass two parameters, which are response comma status equals angle bracket open and closing curly braces. Then console log both of them in there. The response object will have the directions data if it is successful. Now switch back to the browser. Nice. I can see the data in the developer console. Now that we have data, let's render it on the map. So create a directions renderer object below the directions service object. Const space directions renderer equals new space google dot maps dot directions renderer opening closing parenthesis and semicolon then inside the callback function i'm going to check the status if it is okay so if opening closing parenthesis status triple equals okay all uppercase inside double quotes then opening closing curly braces in there set the direction data which is the response object to the renderer by calling set directions method on the directions renderer object directions renderer dot set directions opening closing parenthesis semicolon pass the response object in there now we told the renderer what needs to be rendered but it does not know where yet let's fix that by calling the set map method on it so directions renderer dot set map opening and closing parenthesis and semicolon then pass the map like so which is declared in here that's it hop over to the browser select any route item from the list boom now you can see how easy it is to implement using 
Directions Service. Hey, if you want to know more about Google Maps API and how you can use it to enhance location-based services in your JavaScript or Vue.js app, check out my course link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.